No, seems fine. Because obviously it's not um, not one o'clock yet. I'll just talk about the changes to the way I'm going to do the streams. I'll include it in the recording if anybody who intends logging on isn't logged on yet. There was a, a small discussion in the chat room about the, the stream. Nothing, not, not much of a discussion, but it just got me thinking. The way that I see these streams is more as a teaching aid than anything else. And the, the way that I've done it is I'll trade a match pretty much as I would anyway, obviously with reduced stakes because there's lots of distractions, etc., etc. One of the reasons I use one of the many reasons that I use reduced stakes is that towards the end of a set or the end of the match, uh, specifically, I will keep looking for extra opportunities to be able to show mainly the newer members um, what, what opportunities can come up, how often they work out, etc., etc. In reality, what I would usually do if I'm happy with the profit. I would hedge and either if there's another match to move to, I would do so. If not, either go and do something else, have something to eat, whatever. Other things in life. Um, but I wouldn't be trading every possible opportunity that came up. Because as, you, as you've seen from some of the streams, if you've, if you've watched a few of them, it's quite easy to get rid of the profit that you've built up in the rest of the match. Um, and over trading is definitely a, an issue that you need to be aware of. You can soon screw up a decent position. So what I'm intending doing from now is still going to trade as normal. It's only really going to change the end of end of sets or the end of the match. If I if I've reached a situation where whether it's green or red, um, that I would say right enough's enough hedge that and move on. If there's another match to move to, we'll do that. If there isn't a match to move to, I'll still continue to try and find opportunities, but I won't trade them unless it's a really strong opportunity. Just to make it more realistic, really. Um, so I'll still point out, <clears throat> if, if something happens in the match, I'll point out this could be a good opportunity and in effect paper trade it. So say we could lay at 1.25 or whatever it is. Um, the reason we get into trading is to make money. So, so what I was doing initially was just trying to throw as much information out there as possible. With the benefit of hindsight, it wasn't necessary to actually trade them. You could show somebody something without actually putting money on it. Um, so that's it's not going to be a massive change. Hopefully, it's going to make it more realistic. Um, and maybe concentrate on keeping the profit rather than. <clears throat> I think certainly in the in the when I'm doing the tennis profit ones, I do say to them, if ever you're happy with the profit, take it, and I will continue to uh, uh, look for opportunities. The main difference, as I say, is we're not going to trade everyone. Hope that's clear. Bit of a waffle, and I'll include this in the recording. And I'll start the stream properly at one o'clock. Okay, I'm nearly at one o'clock. Um, no WTA matches on at the moment. Half past one ish for the next one. And as far as new matches go, isn't it always the case? Again, 1340 is the next new one. It's none that I'm particularly keen to jump in. So the current ATP ones.
Not a huge fan of jumping in matches halfway through. Prefer to get in from the start. I think I favoured Kubler to win that one, but in five, but his stats in that first set are shockingly bad. Plenty of first serves in, 83%. Is only one half the 20 points on his first serve, one from four on his second. And uh, the cost uh, served him pretty well, he's lost just three points on serve. Kubler can blow hot and cold. Usually cold when I get on uh, on his matches. Kokinakis has gone two sets up. Evans had a break lead in that second set, threw it away. Probably back on the drugs. Albert oh, looks like he's going to win in three as expected. Catching off two sets to one down. Got a break up in the fourth. Looks like Goff and Hercat's going to five. Ought to be a fairly safe bet. Picking virtually any time with all these matches on. And as usual, they've conspired not to have one available. I do like the fact that the French Open spread the first round matches over three days as opposed to two. It'll be slow having 64 matches in a day to not only research with trading tips, but to try and find a path through all the matches, even more matches on at the same time than we've got today. Medical timeout, Gibson. I suppose if anything, where are we? Would be worth a lay on Kokinakis, I reckon. Even if you've got a strong favourite when it's the best of five, uh, player goes two sets up. Right, let me stop talking and just find the bloody market. Bloody market. Oh, 
He's serving first, is he? Now, I was saying a few minutes ago, it's going to be, I'm going to include that in the recording. Uh, I'm going to be changing a little bit how I do these streams, trying to make it more realistic. What I've been doing up till now is just trying to pack in as much information as possible. Um, find as many opportunities in a match as possible. What I've been also doing is, when I've found those opportunities, I'm trying to trade. Well, I am trading everyone to demonstrate it. And that's not really. It's not realistic, and it's not really necessary. What I'm going to do, pretty much the the first part of the streams are going to be exactly the same as they've been because that's how I trade them, albeit with usually bigger stakes uh, when I'm not on a stream. So I'm going to trade that as normal. Uh, if I get to a point where I would normally hedge. I'm going to hedge on the stream. If there's another match to move to, which is what I would do normally, then we'll do that. If there isn't a match available to move to, I'll continue as I have been looking for extra opportunities. I just won't trade them unless it's a really strong one. We get into trading to make money from the markets. And I think these streams need to reflect that, show you not only how to hopefully get some profit, but how to hang on to it as well. The way I was doing it before is one of many reasons why I do use uh, reduced stakes. Just bring the stats up for this one. Uh, there's a couple of piece, people mentioned in the chat room over the last few days. Uh, it's probably more helpful to show something near it, near it reality, which makes sense, giving me a bit to think about. So, Kokinakis Evans. I did favour Kokinakis to win, expected it to be a long match. Stats wise, the only real difference you've got a higher first serve percentage for Kokinakis. First serve uh, points won't pretty even, and second serves better for Kokinakis as well. Evans, as you can see, 3 0 up in that last set, 4 1 up, and then pretty much fell apart. Oh, hang on. Medical timeout. Marvellous. Hopefully nothing serious. Topping up his drugs. That could possibly explain the uh, collapse. I'm in here at 1.14, so I'm not particularly worried. Oh, if he quits. Oh, if he quits, he quits. Taking on water, so he's not planning on quitting. I was too busy waffling to see uh, what they were doing with him, if anything. When they just joined the stream, one thing you'll have noticed, especially if you've watched previous ones, is that I've got the match video on the live stream. Turns out that's not what their uh, YouTube's copyright checker, whatever you want to call it, copyright detection. Um, it seems to be just the sounds, the music that they play between at the change events that triggers uh, the copyright issues.
this stream's now been on for a good hour and it's not triggered any issues so hopefully you can keep the video in not recording desktop audio uh, i do have the sound on the stream the microphone doesn't pick it up but it's loud enough for me to hear it so much better situation Few matches going to five sets. So I'm catching up. going to five. Johan's going to five. Martinez going to five. Well, ideally, we need Kukunakis to take a little bit of a breather at the beginning of this set. Evans just had a medical timeout, didn't see what it was for. Thought Isner would have a decent match today. He's performed pretty well, surprisingly well on uh, on clay over the years. Not at his best this year. Maybe he doesn't have that long left on the tour. Great down in the first set. I invest to five quite often the player two sets up and relax a little bit allow his opponent back in that can happen even with fairly strong favorites so it's worth a go it's always going to be at a pretty low price so low risk evans has the ability is he 100 percent healthy god knows just spoke to the medics about something Maybe he was getting coaching advice. I'll look through in four sets. Come on, Daniel, don't crumble just yet. Yeah, that's typical. I did favour Kubler uh, to be a Costa in a long match. His stats were shockingly bad in the first set. Lost it 6 1, just gone 2 0. I'm on the wrong match.
at this sort of price I wouldn't usually bother getting out. Which is why I try and keep the liability pretty low. I'm gonna save myself if I got out now I'm saving myself like 25, 26 quid. Oh the chance is gonna come back. Probably a little less likely it's going to come back if he's having medical treatment. But I say I have no idea what it was for. And then he was just teasing me there, saving two break points. So having kept the liability pretty small, it's it's really not worth getting out. We're still in the first half of the third set. So sort of a set and a break situation, Kokinakis. When I went through the stats for this one, it was pretty even, really. Uh, so I did go for Kokinakis to take it. Dan Evans, you just never know what you're going to get, what level you're going to get from it. Can be superb. Can be absolutely shocking. So let's be kind and say he's not 100%. So two sets in a break. No let up from Kokinakis. That's easy to say looking at the scoreboard. I should have gone with um, Kubler, who I did favour pre match. I gave Evans a really strong chance in this one. So it was a toss up between Kubler, who had been terrible in the first set, or Evans, who had been a break up. Just gave it away. Picked the wrong one. No, hopefully, Artem, you're watching the stream. No, this isn't the only one. Um, 
I did say when I got into this, I'm really waiting for the matches that start around about half past one. It did seem like an opportunity with Kokinakis being two sets up. As I've said a couple of times, if a player is two sets up in a best of five, often worth a late. Just don't do it if that means you're back in a Brit. Still a chance he fights back. I suppose. Still a chance he uh, loses 6-2. Again, in a two sets to love lead. Nice slow entry. No big deal. Catching off break up in the fifth. Martinez and Goffin, their match is still on serve. City pass two sets up. Evans under pressure again, so let's be kind and accept he's probably not 100%. Yeah, it's been a long time. I don't know if it's anything physical, he didn't seem to have any massage or anything. Okay, gets the hold. Orders a break up on McDonald. It's the battle of players who haven't won a match this year on clay. Come on, give us a bit of pressure on this Dokinakis service game. That's just two points so far on serve this set. Seems pretty comfortable to be honest. Yes. Look 
Like he's never going to get broken. Can't even jinx him. Starts in the last set. Nothing special for Kokinakis. Pretty strong in the first set though. Nick Evans needs to stay with him, make him serve out the uh, match. Oh, a point. A point. Is it two double faults apparently, according to the stats? It's Kokinakis. Another two would be good. Or three. Second serve. Oh, he's saying it's in. Ah, <laughs> what a shame. <laughs> I'm going to change his mind now, matey. Get on with it. Get on with it. Two double faults and we're back in business. Uh, if he's peed off, is that going to make him serve harder or miss? Ooh, great point. Come on, Daniel. Sort your life out. Second serve. Second serves. It's not going to be your best chance. There it goes. So back to break even. Might as well stay with him now. See with the lowish price lays if you're not going to save very much by getting out. Often can turn around, even though it looked, it didn't look likely, let's face it. Can I find the holes? Last one wasn't easy. Don't screw this up now. Stats aren't great, 60% all the way. 
65% first serves in, 60% first serves one, 63% second serves. So this isn't going to be easy. Pinakis is going to be wound up. Having a swing. There we go, number 50. Happy days. Would be very British to hand this straight back, wouldn't it? Well, not very British, but British tennis player. Son of a really don't swear on a live stream. Don't do it. Cheers, Daniel. <laughs> what a chimp. What a chimp. Okay, we've got Rakimova starting. She's serving. Rocky Mova, no superstar on clay. On the quarterfinals of a challenger in May, semis in Bogota in April, and also made the semis in Bogota uh, in 2022. So, something about that venue she likes. Not a lot of clay success. So, I'll keep an eye on that one. This one's not got long to go, I suspect. He did this last time, didn't he? Got 40 down, got back to 30 40, and then got broken. Rack him over easy hole in the first game, in that one. There we go. What a waste of space. So I'll just see if Kokinaki serves this out. And we'll have a switch to a different one. Very good for a service game. Rack him over out of 15. So I think in the last Kokinaki service game, circumstances gave Evans a bit of a boost. Disputed line call, distracted Kokinakis. Can't see him getting much of a chance in this one. You never know. Ah, Rocky Mova's got three break points. Yeah. 
Kugler's five would up in the second set. Don't tell me it's going to be one of those days. Second serve, he's missing a few first serves in this set. Not making a whole lot of difference. Well, he gets his loser's check. Oh, Daniel. Gats a break up in the fifth. Gatchinov was a break up. Broken back. So I've got two more break points to go ahead again. Break point Greek spore in the fifth. Cheers, Daniel. Cheers. Right, next one. Time we got three thirty, three thirty, one The Rackham overmatch wasn't what I intended trading. Just see this Kokinakis one ends before I switch the scoreboard over. Um, 40-30. Don't tease me. Showing a bit of potential this WTA match being a break already. Bit of pressure on Rakim over a break up. So a pretty dismal first service game. For Bejlek, is that how you say that? Don't 
don't know a huge amount about it. Look at my notes for this one. Win percentage are actually better for Blaze Lake. She came through the qualifying rounds. Most of the matches are in ATFs. Rocking over lost in the first round last year. Qualifying was a challenger in May. Um, Semi finals in Bogota this year and last year. She's looking for 2.2 to back it. That ship might have sailed. She goes three and a lot with the way Bejlek served in her first game. Not in a rush to lay. I think it's quite likely there's going to be another break in the next game. So I'm just going to stay out for now. With it being the only WTA match, it would be nice to get a trade out of it, but I don't want to force it for the sake of it. Trying to keep these more realistic. I wouldn't be jumping in at this stage. What else is happening? Corder setting a break up. I thought that would be close. Did think Corder would take it. Second set is Naborges on, uh, on serve. Kuba was 5 3 up serving for the second set. 60 past 2. Sets up. Fuksevix lost the second set. Gets a break up in the third. Greek score a break up in the fifth with Martinez catching off on serve again in the fifth. And the Cats won that game away from beating Duffan in the fifth. So, basically, are we going to get broken again? Better going for a two o'clock start. Just didn't want to overrun with the football. Starts at four. Stats for this one weren't all that helpful, to be honest. Basically, like plays mostly in ITFs. Um, 
has had some decent results on the ITF and often if a player is almost ready to step up from ITF to WTA and they get a lot of success on the ITFs, it helps confidence and they can actually perform pretty well certainly in the first few matches against um, WTA opposition Rocky Mova, no superstar, 85th in the world. So I did have on the trading tips, did have her winning in three. I suppose let can find a serve or two. I suppose double break could be worth a lay for a game. Normally from a double break, the market isn't going much further, but this could easily be. I've missed it now. Oh, this could easily be a six low. She did have a break point in the last service game. So this is a one game deal for Bejlik. I think either way I'm going to be out after this one because I don't trust her to hold in the next game. Can see why I should be a little bit nervous unless she's come through the qualifying rounds, didn't play anybody of any great note. Yeah, six love quite likely so far. He's like won three points in the first two service games. Schedule not being kind so far. So far, so far. Come on, you buggers. Who's next on the WTA? Mertens, she's a low price, that's no good. Lynette Fernandez should be good. Sakari Makova, Gornay Georgie, even Zidansek Zeng's gonna have a few swings in it. Some pretty crappy matches up until now in the women's. They do get better. As always, the stream will be recorded. Can't imagine why I went into this one again. Mm 
We did start. I mean, she started around about 187. I was 187 this morning. And I can't imagine the set two, the price for the set two winners is going to still be at that sort of price. And let's just have a look. Where is it going to be? It's 159. No money in it. Can be worth using those markets sometimes, but it's a punt rather than a trade. Very rarely get a value price. And don't even try to get out because you won't have any liquidity. Gatchin off with a break point, give him a chance to serve for the match. Kubo took the set. There's already a break up in third. Bloody hell. Isn't he making a push for the second set? Dukes of X, 3 1 up. In the third, call a set and a break. Oh, and it's there. They're on court. Are they on court? Probably not yet. Just a quick check that the uh, stream still connected. I'm not talking to myself. Six love, Rocky Mulgra. Okay, I'll have a go at Lynette. Flash score say it's five past. Two to start. Merton's due to start in the next five minutes or so, although she's not on the scoreboard. But she's a really short price there. And that's not always a bad thing with Merton's, but not sure the other girl's got too much hope in that one. So Lynette against Fernandez. Head to head one one. Uh, most recent match was in April last year on clay. Lynette won in three. Fernandez won on clay in 2020 in three sets. Clay win percentage is a little bit better for Fernandez. Lynette reached the second round last year. Second round in Strasbourg, third round in Rome and Madrid. Although she had buys in the first rounds of those. Third round in Charleston. Quarterfinals in Strasbourg in 2022. Fernandez reached the quarterfinals last year. She's had just two second rounds on clay since then. Not had the best season, definitely. Fernandez and clay is not her best surface. She had some really poor results. Uh, 12 month WTA clay stats, even on serves, slight edge to Fernandez on return. Three month clay stats, better for Fernandez on serve, which surprises me, but stats are stats. Looking to lay Fernandez around 1.6. She starts as a very slight favourite, 1.91 this morning. Same Mertens is on there, but she starts at 1.11. There's nothing else to do. I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure I'd be laying her. Mertens can lose against practically anyone. So I'll stick with this Lynette one. Um, if I look at some of Fernandez's recent matches.
Okay, Fernandez lost to Stearns in Rabat in the second round. Wasn't that impressive as a 1.08 favourite in the first round that week. She reached the same as an ITF uh, in May. One of those matches she had a walkover. She lost to Saribas Tomo in straight sets in the semis. She lost in the first round to Saznovic in Rome. First round in Madrid to Andreeva. Uh, lost to Bedoza, fair enough, in Charleston. Two close sets. Those were matches since the quarterfinal in Paris last year. Lynette disappointing last week against Pavlyuchenkova. Tight match had Admire in Rome in the third round. Uh, also lost to Andreeva in Madrid, third round there. Three sets against Keys in Charleston in April. And she made the second round last year. So even though the stats, normally one of the strongest indicators for me is uh, service stats. Not just the holds, but the first serve percentage points one, second serve percentage points one. They actually slightly favour Fernandez, which was a surprise. So we'll see what we get. Let's get the marking up. Okay, pretty much evens. Let's have some stats on here. So one ninety one when I looked at it. When did I do that one? That'll have been last night when I researched this one. Slight drift since then, nothing spectacular. Last year, Lynette had quarter-final of a challenger in May. Second round of a challenger and also in May last year. Uh, quarter-finals in Strasbourg, as I said. Quarter-finals in Charleston for last year. So both of them had better results last year. Lynette's a tough opponent. I wouldn't want to have, be having a punt on this one. Should give us a train or two. <laughs> Rack him over broken in the first game of the second set. How I haven't actually hired a hitman to take some of these idiots out, I do not know. Bezalek still hasn't managed to hold serve yet. He's facing a break point again. And she still hasn't held serve yet. Rakimova could be forgiven to think she could afford to have a little rest in that first game. The price wouldn't have moved very far for that break. Uh, 
Perkats through in five, catching all through in five, Greek sport through in five. Uh, all but through in four, all but, all but. Offer through in three, Kokinakis. Straight sets. Fuchs of X up a break in the third. <sighs> Since he passed was two sets up. And as I keep saying, he just didn't work on the one that I tried. Even a strong favourite can lose the third, and he has done. Maselli takes it 6 4. Kubler Acosta at one set all. Isner hasn't lost the second set yet. So Rakimova seems to be back on track, and we lost the first game of the second set. Merton's already a break up. So I'll just wait for Lynette and Fernandez. And certainly from now on, if the match that we're on doesn't seem to be giving us too much, plenty of alternatives. First hour of the stream's been a bit of a non-event. But again, that, that can be a reality. That wasn't Fernandez, was it? So, oh. <laughs> well, what's happened to Fernandez? Lost all her hair. Turned into a boy. I shouldn't assume it was a boy. Let's not get cancelled. Right, let me just check some of the stats for Lynette Fernandez. ROI on clay is better for Lynette. Three month clay stats. If I look at all tours for the last three months, everything favours Fernandez. Hmm. If I look at just main tour, even though 
in those we've got that's 90 days Fernandez won two of six Lynette won four of four so stats are better for Fernandez that really does surprise me in return stats are fairly even in fact slightly favour Fernandez so I was favouring Lynette in this one looks like it's going to be pretty close Looking at clay stats on the main tour for the last year, they are really close actually. Slightest. In fact, they're remarkably close. Uh, both held 67%, Fernandez 67.4%. Return points won 41.2% for the net, 41.4% for Fernandez. First serve points won, 61.4% for Lynette, 62.2% Fernandez. Second serve points won, 49.8% Lynette, 49.6% Fernandez. An interesting one. Okay, well, when I looked in detail this morning, sorry last night, very slight edge to Lynette to win in three. Right then, who's serving? Who's serving? That's 
Some of the predictions haven't been bad actually. If we uh, just gloss over Ponche one. What was I thinking? What was I thinking? So I will stick with the original plan. Trading wise, it was. Slay Fernandez ran about 1.6, remove some liability at 2.1. Play the set one winner. And at the end, I've put despite the stats, it's hard to trust Fernandez when considering her recent form. How right you are. Okay, need a scoreboard telling me who's going to serve. Because they do, on paper, look pretty even, as long as the price is right, laying either one in the early games could work well. And those to serve. Okay, here we go. Merton's double break up. So since last year's French Open, the Nets had slightly better results. As I said a few minutes ago, stats seem too good for Fernandez compared to what you'd expect based on how she's been playing. And the stats pretty even between the two. And certainly when I'm assessing a match, stats play a massive part of it. And if I ever ignore the stats, it usually bites me on the bump. I'm just going to switch this lad around so it's in the same order as the scoreboard. Oh. <laughs> that the worst drop shot you'll ever see.
when things on paper do look as close as these two do, you've got to be realistic when you're looking at how the stats are actually panning out in play. And you need to be careful of hanging on to the pre-match opinion. If everything's telling you that you're wrong. And anybody who, who's married is often used to the fact that someone's telling you you're wrong. To brush it off. Okay, good start for Fernandez. So five, four to fifteen. Only miss one first serve. That was a horrible second serve, double fault. If it wasn't for the stats being so even, I would be all over the net for this one. Would be nice if Fernandez can get the hold and put some pressure on the next game. But she's back to juice, 40 15 to juice. Just something that we have added to tennis profits. It's not finished yet. Um, match situation stats. We've only got a few coded into it at the moment. One of which is how often they're broken in the first service game. So Fernandez not very often. Three from 11. 2% for Lynette. The idea is that box will update throughout the match with relevant stats. Uh, anybody who's seen the Tennis Profits website, you see all the stats down at the bottom of the match stats page when you're researching a match. Uh, I've given the developer all the triggers and everything for all those. They'll be added next week. At the moment, all we've got is broken in first service game, tie breaks, and how they perform after winning or losing the first set. So you'll get some stats at the end of the set. So 40% is fairly high to be broken in your first service game. So if Fernandez can get the hold of it, we've got a chance of getting our 1.6 late on Fernandez in the next one. Okay, two follow up gets there. In the end, 56% first serves in, 
Sean and off one point on first serve, one from four on second. So we need to serve. Rocky him over, set him 5 2 up. Mertens 4 0 up. Now uh, Sakari and Cobra started as well. I think that could be a tricky one actually. Slight edge to Sakari in that one. Stats are already wrong on Lynette's serve. Say she's played four points, which she hasn't. They do correct the stats after a game or two. Let's keep an eye on it. Looks like a decent start though for Lynette. Say she gets broken four times out of ten. In a first service game. Scar is a break up already. Should be a very tight match. Okay, both these two started the service game as well. Pulled back to juice.
So we still have not a break point. Gets the hold, no entry yet. Isn't it took the second set? Good lads. Cooper is serving for the second. I need to stop looking at that score because that's going to irritate me. He was awful in that first set. Right, Fernandez serving. <clears throat> Shouldn't read too much in the first two service games, but the way that they both went suggests that whoever goes a break up. Isn't going to easily hold on to the lead. When I am favouring Lynette to win it. Very little on paper between them. Better result last year than Fernandez at quarterfinals. Not done anything on clay since then. So I'd rather be laying Fernandez than Lynette, but Second serve looking like being a problem for Fernandez so far. One from five. One from six. First break point. Price isn't really going to be attractive if she does get the break. Unless there's a big overreaction. Second serve, decent chance of a break. Only one more point on second serve. That's going to be an issue for it. Uh, 160 odd. Right, because they are so closely matched, try a little late. Only one break point so far, but nobody's had an easy service game. Lynette 
hasn't lost a point on first serve, but she's only got 38% first serves in. Two from five on second. I think there could be quite a few breaks in this one. So in this one, this lay, really relying on stats as opposed to my opinion of Fernandez. She does look like she's sorted a serve out though. I'm not going to stay too long with this because I'd rather be on the other side. Pond shape match has shown me that stats aren't always correct. I think I did mark it as a low confidence one on the trading tips. I'm not too worried about uh, first serves for either player, it's second serves that's going to cause them the problems. And in a few more first serves in this one. And that's being called in as an ace. Fernandez thinks it's out. Umpire says it's in. Really? Mm, don't know about that one. Second serve. She had a chance to take that point, didn't take it. 
So do I stay? I'm going against my favorite player. My ability is not big. I'm going to try and stick with Fernandez. Needs to avoid second serves. So in the match situation box there would be so hopefully they get it done Tuesday. I'm told that they're very easy to add. So we find out. So you get stats on how often they break back if they break first in set. Uh, how often they serve out the sets. How often they hold serve to stay in the sets. So there's some pretty useful stats going to pop up. We do have those stats already on the site. There's a couple of new ones that I think I've added to it. Um, I just find it quite distracting to have to move your concentration to, in my case, another screen. If you're having to use one screen, you're having to close something down so you can read that screen. It's just... It gets to the point where it's too much of a distraction that you don't do it. So this box would certainly make a difference to me personally. And I'll be coming up with as many different stats as I can. So pretty much it, the dream, if you like, um, um, is that it more or less holds your hand all the way through a match, gives you relevant information. Doesn't tell you what to trade. But hopefully it gives the information to make the decisions that little bit easier. So easy hold for Fernandez. First easy one. First easy service game. From the first five. Is that going to put a bit of pressure on Lynette to do the same? Oh, that was an opportunity. That wasn't a good second serve at all. Bounced quite high for Fernandez, but she should have done better than that. Didn't have any second serves in that last service game, Fernandez.
another bad miss. to point so a little bit of brushing out comes to nothing Makova back on serve Not been really impressed with Fernandez's return game. Despite that, she's back at juice. Did have juice in Lynette's first service game, didn't manage it in the last one. And doesn't take advantage this time either. And if I'd favoured Fernandez pretty much. Wouldn't be too concerned, but because I'm favouring Lynette, thinking about getting out if she holds it. Not that much between them, but just the bigger points seem to be going to Lynette. Still hasn't placed a break point. Fernandez has only placed one, but Lynette took it. That's the difference so far. And, uh, nice jinx. So I've got the option to take a little bit out there. If I'm not too late, I uh, maybe I am gonna remove that. Oh, I got matched anyway, I think a little bit. No, two quid. The reason I took that out or cancelled it was it was only gonna get matched if the point went my way anyway. Which is a shame it didn't get matched. Apart from two pounds twenty three. 
minutes, slowly increasing our first serve percentage, 54% now. Second serve points are looking better. Some good length on some of those returns in that one. For Fernandez. Oops, stop talking, take some out, you moron. Did I click the right box? Thought I'd hedged for a minute then. So that's just slightly improved break even price to 152. So you're going to take this one? Probably not. Oh, she is. Okay, what I'm going to do there is leave leave that as it is. I did want to lay originally Fernandez 1.6, I think I said. Round or there, there or thereabouts anyway, 1.6. So I'll see if she can get down to that sort of price. See the stats, I offer ends. She's got the higher first serve percentage, she's got the higher first serve point one. Second serve is the issue for it. One from seven. Second serve. It's just aborted the ball toss a few times as well. Sometimes lack of confidence. Oh, no, she's winning second serve points now. Lynette. Only now winning just over half the service points. 53% on first serve, 55 on second. Voltos again. And again. Second serve. I think uh, confidence is pretty fat, fragile, Fernandez. Ball toss again. She's not comfortable. <laughs> it's an ace. She's not comfortable at all. It's an ace. Now I'm beginning to wonder if I fluked. Been on the right side. She held the last service game to love. It's four to love up here. Low liability. She does get this easy hold. It's worth just giving a chance to break the net in the next game. So I haven't quite reached the target, the original target of 1.6. But this is becoming a bit of a plan B, I think, the way things are going. Let's see how this game finishes. I 
Oh, still my eyes. Lynette to win that one. Superb point. So I've got the option there just to hedge and wait, but seems like a little bit of momentum for Fernandez. If she can, especially if she can just get the hold, which she has done. So as we're getting nearer the end, certainly considering hedging there. But the momentum is with Fernandez. Can obviously change pretty quickly. I think I've got to give a chance to break or at least go ahead in the next service game. Already taken some liability out. I'm not in a rush to take any more out. And because it has been a close set, this is definitely a situation if I can just get a slightly better price when I'm going to hedge to take something to set two. Andy in the chat says uh, Fernandez had a problem with the ball toss against Stearns last week. I don't see what would cause that. That's not a physical thing causing that. It's it's just confidence. They should, should literally almost be able to do that in a sleep, tossing the ball up. That's how every single point starts on a service game. Anyway, are we going to get a little better price here? Well, the net stats have really dropped. Well, not really dropped, but they have dropped. Obviously, in that last game of hers, she was broken. See how this one goes. She's probably going to hold easily. And I should have edged. Ah, there we go. And there's my original target price to lay Fernandez. I think we're on plan B at the minute. Second serve. I'm going to hedge that there. Decent price move, don't totally trust Fernandez. And I'm still clinging on to the fact that I favoured Lynette. Pretty much. It's only really the fact that the stats are so close and if anything favour Fernandez. that encouraged me to stay with it as long as I did that. So not a bad price move. 164 on Lynette's side. Took some liability out, 184. Hedged at 149 on Fernandez. Potentially it was a tricky uh, a tricky match, definitely a tricky first set. Started evenly priced. Hmm. 
<laughs> Probably should have made it one point six, shouldn't I? I'm doubting both of them now. Oh, nice Merton's a breakdown in set two. Wow. So a break point is still five points higher than where I've hedged. So I'm happy that was the right decision. Right, Fernandez does break here. This is the question, do I lay her um, serving for the set? I lost two service games. Uh, do I hold to love there? She was 40 love up, got pulled back to 40-30. No, I'm going to leave that. I'll wait for the set. Which pretty much guarantees she's going to get broken, obviously. You moron. Now, the price wasn't that attractive. It would be a fair move against. Um, Probably more upside than downside on it, but if I was trading on my if I was trading on my own with bigger stakes, I wouldn't have laid there. So as I said at the start of the stream, I'm trying to keep what I do as realistic as possible. Obviously, it is a it can be a decent entry to lay a player when they're serving for a set. And because I've got some profit, I could have used a little bit of it, but. Over trading is the fastest way to give your profit back. And even though she was pulled back from 40 love to 40 30 in the last game, she has improved its serves. Second serve, not so much. Still three from 10 on second serve. I think the biggest difference between how I normally trade compared to how I've been doing the uh, the live streams is you don't have to take just because there's an opportunity if it doesn't feel like a really strong one you don't have to take it <laughs> it's going to get broken here anyway And it's often a case of the best way to hang on to the profit that you've got. To wait for the more cast iron opportunities. Price wasn't quite right.
and this is only the second breakpoint that she's faced, but she's saved anyway. I think one of the hardest things I, I needed to learn was to not beat myself up for not getting every trade correct. There will always be times when you decide not to enter and it goes the way that you thought it might go. So what? There's always another set coming along, there's always another match coming along. So that set hasn't gone the way that I expected, pretty much. Got a bit of profit to take into set two. Should be getting some situation stats popping up. Situation stats. If we look at Lynette, she's been broken in the last two service games, so she's serving now, not in a rush to lay. Come on, situation stats. Whenever you're ready. In your own time. The um, scores feed that we use for tennis profits is about 30 seconds behind what you'll get from Bet365 and flash scores. It costs an absolute fortune to get updates as fast as those two websites. Not worth it when you can get it for free elsewhere. Go on. There we go. So in the last 12 months on at Clay, not huge sample sizes, they haven't played that many matches. When Lynette has lost the first set, she wins the second set just three times out of eight and wins the match two times out of eight, so that's not encouraging. Fernandez, when she's won the first set, wins in straight sets three out of four and wins the match four out of four. But certainly the stats there, it's not a big sample size. They haven't played many matches. But the stats are certainly a strong argument for not laying. Let's see how the net starts. And if I'm considering leaving that match there, I just have a look at the matches that are on at the minute. Often, uh, it also depends the stage of the, the stage of the tournaments that you're in. Normally, by the end of the week, there won't be another match anyway because you're on the semis or the final. At the <laughs> excuse me, the minute Mertens is still a break behind in set two. I don't know what her price is. I would imagine she's between one point one five or one point two. Started around 1.11. Uh, Sakari Makova. Sakari was ahead. She's about to go a break behind. That could be an interesting one for set two. So have a look at the stats of that match. Uh, I'll click on the right thing, you moron. That's okay. Sakari, first serve percentage. Look. <laughs> Jesus. What's the point of looking at these? Got into flash score, first serve points won, 14 out of 13, 108%. That's amazing. Okay, so first serve percentage, 40%. Second serve, not bad, 57%, but 12 out of 21 because the first serve percentage is low. Um, Oh, first serve points one's just corrected to 69% now. That's more like it. So not amazing stats. The fact that her 
second serve points one percentage is the lower of the two is an issue because the first serve percentage is so low. Makova, 61% first serves in. She's 70% of first serve points. One, 62% on second. She's faced three break points being broken once. That was in a first service game, I think. Well, it looks like momentum. Is with Makova, but she probably needs to take the chance that she's got now to get the break. So can only 30 40. So let's see how the net does in this first one. Okay, so Kari broke and Makova is going to serve, but that was very another one that was very, very close on the stats. I gave a slight edge to Zakari. Should be a chance of three sets. A little bit concerned by that first serve percentage. Lynette serving. And starting well. I haven't got that much profit from the first set, so I don't certainly want to use it all. I do like. Only two break points faced by Fernandez. I suppose it could be Fernandez is just having a little rest after that set. One of the easiest service games Lynette's had, although she was ahead in a couple of the others and got pulled back. It's certainly a good start uh, to this game when you think she was broken in the last two service games. And these situation stats are suggesting that this is going to be straight sets. Still not totally convinced by that one. So I'm going to use some of the profit. I've used about 50% of it there. That's the top end of what I would normally use. And normally I would have a little bit more green to play with. When the figures are low, it's tempting to use a bigger percentage of it. All the stats were pretty even in the pre-match analysis. Um, Fernandez definitely had the momentum in that last set I'm going to break down see how she reacts in this one so you've got to be mindful of these uh, the stats of how she does when she's taken your first set also got to take it taken with a little bit of a pinch of salt small numbers three out of four it's nothing really it's obvious almost Useless. Almost. Okay, 
say second serve still could be an issue for it. Three from 12 on second serve on that first set. That's a poor return from the net. A bit of a chance there, 15 30. If she doesn't take advantage, is that going to play on the mind in the next game? Second serve, I think. Yep, ball toss problem again. I think Flash Scrolls had that as a first serve. Could be wrong. Either way, it's a break point. Ball toss problem. She served pretty well to say she can't throw a ball up in the first set. Second serve, got to be a chance of a break. And there we go. Now the choice here is I could just hedge it and move as you get further into uh, the second set decent opportunities solid opportunities are a little bit fewer and harder to find i always find trading the, the early stages of a set slightly easier see uh, makova was broken serving for the set now the issue i've got here is lynette serves so well in the first game here, having lost her last two service games in the previous one. So while I'm jabbering on, I didn't do anything. I've still got the lane. It's, it's risk free. If she gets to a 3 0 lead, probably going to be hedging this one. Still got one eye on the Sakari match. You would think that's going to be worth a lay in the second set. So am I going to get 185? Don't be tight, don't be tight. Oh, I am. Thank you. Okay, so from that situation in the match, it gets harder to predict which way stuff's going to go. The pricing in this match, they're now priced relatively evenly. I'm going to take what I've got there and just look for something else. So let's shut that down. Sakara is the obvious one. It's quite rare that I trade four matches. And like I said, I find it easier to trade the first set and a half. And after that, you can, you can convince yourself that you're finding opportunities. And often you are. It's not half as easy as it is earlier in the match. So let's have a look at this one. Where are we? Tie break, Makova 3 1. Let's get a market up. Oh, 
come on with it. Right, there we go. Uh, let's find the situation stats. I shut that one down. Can only have one of them open at a time. So we've got tie break record. Again, really small sample, two out of two for Makova, none out of two for Sakari. Uh, you got the point by point record on flash scores. Scarry was 3 0 up in the set. Pull back to 3 all. Uh, had break chances. With Makova serving at 3 4. Makova broke to go 6 5 up, was broken to 30 serving for it, and that's how we end up in a tie break. My pre match assessment was Makova leads 2 1, most recent May 2022 on clay, Makova in two tie breaks. So we've got another one. Uh, she won on clay in 2021, three sets. Sakari won on hard courts in 2016. Sakari, second round last year, third round in Rome. Same as in Madrid. Last year, same as in Parma. Quarterfinals in Rome. Makova reached the third round last season. So a few more ranking points to defend for Makova. Fourth round in Rome, second round in Madrid this year. 12 month clay stats better for Sakari on serve. Return stats a little better for Makova. Fair chance of three sets. Play Makova around 165. Remove liability 2.1. Well, that ship sailed. And lay the set one winner. So I think it's worth a lay. If it's going to be Sakari serving first. No, it isn't. No, Makova, Sakari will have served first in the tie break. So it's going to be Makova serving first. Sorry. Bit of a mind freeze there. Time break's not over. Actually, 5 4 and the player at 5 4 up serving isn't a bad entry in the tie break. But you get a better feel for whether it's a good opportunity if you've been in from the start. Personally, you know what I feel, which is why I prefer to be in matches at the start. So that would that is a good opportunity, generally speaking, a player serving at five four in a tie break. It's very rare that they'll win for uh, both their service points. Because I've not been involved in the match, I'm not going to enter. I'm sure the player serving at 5-4 thinks I've got two serves. I should be able to serve this out. I just don't do it. And if I said that, she probably will now. <laughs> they do find ways to make it look stupid. So if you're going to take two, make me out to be a liar. Makova serves, uh, serves first in set two. So I'm going to have a little lay. There you go.
obviously works a little bit better if she takes the first of the two service points, the receiver. Uh, she takes a set anyway. So let's have a little lay on the Cobra. She says first she was broken first in set one. Both of them broken twice in the first set. Okay, this is going to be the last match of the stream. I'll look at the other scores. Rakim over did finish that off in two. Uh, Mertens has turned around, or is on the way to turn around the set two. She's two points away from winning. Lynette under a bit of pressure, serving at 3 1. In the men's city pass, one in four. Fuksevic. In four sets, Kokinak is in three, we've done all those others. Isner, two sets to one down, three one up in the fourth set. Horder serving for the match in straight sets. Callan Arnaldi, one set all, thought that would go to five. Right then, situation stats. Makova, when she wins, oh god, when she wins set one, she wins in two sets, three out of three. Small samples again, pin on clay. Makari, sorry, Makari, Sakari, when she lost the first set, wins set two, five times out of nine. So that's not bad. That's not a bad number. Three out of three for Makova. When she takes the first. Quite a lot of the players don't play a lot of clay tournaments. So when you're looking at stats for the last 12 months, often you're not dealing with a huge sample. And often the sample's smaller because they don't always win. It's not every match. They don't always win the first set. So I'm not sure that actually gives as much insight, to be honest. The plan is, well, my plan is, I haven't mentioned it to anybody yet. My plan is that at the minute we're using for the situation starts the last 12 months in today's surface, it can be useful sometimes to use a different time frame and to use all surfaces. I haven't sprung that one on them yet. Okay, a little bit of pressure.
Pearl Maria. Oh, that coffee needs to kick in. I think I got a second serve, judging by the market. Yep. Points entered on twenty seven. I'll take a tiny bit out just to change the break even. I can always put it back in if the price drops again. So I've just moved it to one twenty two break even. Awesome. So I'm not going to take any more out just yet. Often say if it takes them out at break points, no guarantee they're going to take the break. Needs to be after a reasonable price move, though. Corder successfully served that out in straight sets against McDonald's. Lynette's ball one up and a second set. Uh, Mertens did win in two. Made hard work of the second set. Corner and Georgie, that could be an interesting one. Just started. So is the car going to cop this up then? She had the first break in the uh, first set, couldn't hold on to it, ended up losing the set. I don't know how she will handle the situation if she gets broken back here so it's going to be the same pattern maybe an idea if that does happen just a hedge for the tiny profit let's see how it goes liability small so no great pressure First set percentage wasn't well, good in that first set. For Sakari, just 40, uh, 40 percent. Winning over 60 percent on other serves. So she she got away with, well, she lost a set, but she got away with that low first serve percentage to take it as close as she did. Look over 65% in the first set. Again, round about similar, very similar stats actually in the end. 64%, one on first serve, 60% on second. So probably the biggest difference was the first serve percentage. Okay, I have the chance for an easy hold. 40 30 now. <laughs> Who wears the specs like that? I think it's second serve because the market's going against it. No, just to let. 
Is this one Sakari? Get set in the glass. Okay, start prices were. Uh, but even. So we'll stick with that for now. Fernandez under pressure, serving at one four. Intent to juice. Hoping for a bit of pressure from Sakari in this game as well. Hopefully she keeps pushing. Just playing on my mind a little bit that Sakara gave up a break lead in the first. I'm going to take most of the liability out. So Makoba has gone from a poor first game to what's looking like a very easy hold. If the stats are correct, only finding 50% of the first serves. So really, really I'd be looking to keep this position until either Sakara gets broken back or Sakara gets basically another break either way or Sakara goes a double break up. Well the option is just to take the hedge now. Again, my decisions in these situations tend to be based on pre-match assessment. I gave a slight edge to Sakari pre-match. There was very little between them, though, to be fair.
Okay, somebody just told me that my video, uh, the microphone's echoing. Is that just, do I just sound like I'm in a box or is it actually repeating what I'm saying? Shouldn't be. Only got one microphone. Could sound like I'm in a box because I've had to close the window because of the kids playing outside. Great, Scary 2-1. It does sometimes echo a little bit if I have the office door open, but I've got it closed. Sorry, Dennis, I think it's maybe your laptop. Have you got this, this stream open twice? Anyway, love 15. Love 30, this is what I was concerned at. This is why I took the uh, liability out. I'm ready for a break anyway, so I think if she does get broken here, I'm just going to hedge whatever's left. Apart from anything else, it's going to be a long video for somebody to watch. Even when I've edited out the first bit before. Uh, what time did we start? Oh, no, it was one o'clock, wasn't it? Still two and a half hours. I was thinking we started at 12. We did start at 12, but that was to test the uh, whether I could have the video playing. Which, as you're still here, I'm assuming is absolutely fine. That only seems like a small thing, but it's so much less hassle is hassle the right word just having everything the video on here not having to constantly look to another screen okay 15 40. that's a good shot from the cover So car has improved the first serve percentage, but it's not doing that much good. All the other stats are favouring Makova in this set, even though we're only in the fourth game. Yeah. Same pattern again. I'm not sure how favourably she will react to that. So I'm going to hedge and I'm going to call it a day. My stomach's telling me I need to eat something. Um, I'll get the recording up on the site as soon as I can next couple of days and I will see you on the next video.